One, two, one, two, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me loud and clear, loud and clear? Let me know. I am, I'm, I'm used, for some reason, my Discord wasn't working. So I had to get this app called uh, StreamYard to start streaming today. So what I'm going to be doing, let's see. Loud and clear, all right. We're loud and clear. Don't put it so loud, Nate. I was going to put some lo-fi, by the way, guys. I was going to put some lo-fi. I was going to vibe a bit with you guys today because it's been a while. It's been a while since we've chatted. It's been a while since we've chopped it up. It's been a while since I've gotten in the flow with you guys. A lot of things have happened. Uh, you know, um, things are things are moving fast. Things are moving well. But it's always good to catch up. It's always good to talk with the community a little bit, talk with you guys, and answer some questions. You know, I think... You know, as much as I get invited on podcasts and I get invited to do stuff, I'm going to get eye drops on, by the way, in just a second. It's always good to chat with you guys and, and uh, hear what you guys have in mind. And, you know, there's a lot of brilliant people that just don't happen to have a platform, but they're still brilliant. Um, and it's worth listening to that. So, yeah, how you doing, G? I'm doing good. What's up? I'm going to put on the eye drops. That's the only way to record well, no, 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 this is the mic. This is in case when I start bringing people on in order so I can oh, hear them. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. How's everyone doing? Yeah. How's everyone doing? Well, I'm not looking at the questions right now. I'm not actually going to move this. Yo, guys, can you guys hear the music? Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to make sure they can hear the music because it's loud. Kirkland, Coco. Yeah, dude. So right now I'm actually just finished working out and hydrating myself with some electrolytes. Coconut water, best. It's way better than Viagra, gentlemen. So cut the Viagra, start drinking some coconut water, and you will have a blessed and merry life. All right. How's everyone doing? Love from India. What's up, guys, from India? Um, Nate, love your tips on biohacking. I'm glad you guys like them. All right, eye drops acquired. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. We're back. We're back. How's it going? It's been a it's been a crazy couple weeks. We hit up East Palestine, Ohio. That was nuts. Uh, that was nuts. Vlog coming tomorrow, guys. By the way, the team has been working hard to uh, to go through all this footage to make sure um, you guys are in the know. But let me tell you something. Uh, they're definitely hiding shit. So tune into the lives uh, or tune into the video tomorrow on the channel at Luke Belmar to see the updates with East Palestine, Ohio. The cover up is uh, quite interesting and we caught it on video. So look forward to sharing that with you guys. We're still wa waiting for our water tests. Um, how many, how much time we got left for that? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But whenever they come in, we'll just post them link in the bio. People can download them. And we also have the geolocations of the spots for everyone. So people will be able to know exactly where it was. Yeah. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, uh, let's get started. Let's start talking a little bit about um, entrepreneurship, business, life. I know that there were some questions. So I'm down to just chop it up with you guys for a bit. But uh, what are the likes at? What are the likes at? I can't see it. I'm not on YouTube. Hit the like ups, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Hit the like. Share this with somebody. I think it would be a uh, of value. And let's get started. I need to find the link. Anthony, send me the link to the the, the video on Discord. The the link to the live stream. All right. Let me go ahead and get some of these people in. We need at least five hundred likes. If not, oh, I'm moving. I ain't moving. You can't just consume, right? You need to you need to produce. So. Let me post this on Twitter real quick. All right, guys, we're going to get started here. I'm chilling. I'm vibing. Hope you guys are as well. Boom. All right. Post it on YouTube. Chilling. All right, let's start getting some people in here. Start getting some people in here. We added a few people to the Discord. Let's start with somebody called Bagel, but Bagel did not put their question in. Uh, we got Zaid. Let me send Zaid the link to the stream so you can hop in here. 
Once I once I fine tune this process, guys. Yeah, we'll, actually we'll be good. It. All right, perfect. Person can join. I'm just gonna add a ton of people here. Make sure, guys, that you input your name right if you're joining. We have some fire questions too, dude. We have some fire questions. Young kids, millionaires, everything, the whole nine. Shit's epic. Yeah, those are good questions. Fire questions. Got some really good questions. We got some conspiracy questions too, bro. Shit's funny. What do you guys think? Okay, invitations were sent. All right, let me see when these people join. You guys should get the link, please join. All right, we'll start with Zaid, ladies and gentlemen. So Zaid has a question. Let's get started. Turn that down a little bit. Hey Zaid, how you doing, brother? Good. How are you doing, Luke? Doing well. How's your day? It's been great. Been great. Just hustling. I'm a hustler. What books are you reading? I see a. a good um, yeah, right. Right now, I've been reading Power versus Force, and uh, nice. Been rereading The Way of the Superior Man. Mm, great book. Great read. Yeah. Yeah. What What would you say is your favorite book the well i can tell you what i'm that, what i can tell you that what i'm currently reading uh it's right here so i'm reading about artificial intelligence so life 3.0 human being in the age of artificial intelligence so i'm really curious as to the thoughts of other people so studying the the new trends the new stuff brother nice 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 i need to get caught up you uh you had a question talk to me yeah my question was basically what would you say are the best methods of reprogramming your mind hmm. or your subconscious mind great ways to reprogram your subconscious mind the first thing what i would do nate talks about it often is separating your days into into two cycles right so you have your sun cycle and then you have what's called your moon cycle your daytime and your nighttime so you need to understand what each cycle is for and how your brain operates inside of each cycle right so when you enter for example uh dream state and you go into theta state at nighttime you can you, you can enter in, in states of meditation and potentially doing it in person you can do hypnosis things of this nature but uh you can enter theta state right and what you can do in theta state is you can reprogram your mind. Nikola Tesla says that in his dreams, what he would do was he would create inventions and he would create the patents for them in his dreams. So he was operating in dream state. You know, so a lot of people that smoke or uh, cannabis or do drugs, uh, things of this nature, they pay consequences in different ways. One of them is they lose the ability to dream, many of them, right? Because they kind of... Uh, their body tries to catch up with that, right? So what happens when, and this is scientifically proven, you guys can uh, search this, what happens when you don't enter dream state? Well, it's very simple. During the day, you begin, because your body needs to go into dream state, you begin to daydream, right? And you begin to kind of start cruising throughout your daytime as well and fantasizing. It's very well documented. So to reprogram your subconscious mind, you need to be intentional about your sun cycles and your moon cycles and the daytime and the nighttime. So at nighttime, you know, what I like to do is I like to be intentional about uh, my favorite parts of the day or the things that I enjoyed throughout the day or the things that elevated my spirit and end up in a positive vibration, right? In a good note, it's very important to finish the day on a good note. And programming my mind, whether it's through sound waves, music, uh, audio books, whatever it may be to, uh, rewire my mind and you can rewire your mind so every single day you're being bombarded with programming right so you're not enough you're shit you need this amount of money you need this car you need this stuff but then you begin to evaluate all of those things and you realize they're just imposed by other people 
These are rules from other people. Like you needing the Lamborghini is just a rule from another person. A perfect right? example is the sh walking in the neighborhood. Oh yeah. So That's for example, so somebody, for example, what happened was, so Nate's walking through the neighborhood and the security calls and so they're like, oh, four, four of the neighbors said that they're offended that you're walking around in the neighborhood shirtless. And it's like, hold up. Like people want to impose their will and their system and their way of doing, and they're like, you inside can't, their home, bro. you can't, you can't walk without a shirt in your neighborhood. We're in Mind you, you're in a $3 million uh, per house kind of complex. So you have the matrix trying to impose its will upon you at all times and every single way it's trying to dictate your life. And that may sound small. That may sound uh, over the top, but if that's how you think about everything, then that's how your life's going to be. If everything's, ah, oh, that's too exaggerated, that's too exaggerated, oh, that's too whatever, then you're going to be in a situation where you're not in control. So back to answer your question, how do you reprogram your subconscious mind? First of all, you're intentional about what you consume before you go to bed, the images that you consume. You know, so many, so many dudes are out here just watching porn and jerking off <laughs> at the end of the day. And it's, and it's ridiculous. But when you're honest with yourself and you examine your life, you realize why are you going to bed with all that energy? And, and all that ability to, to create because what you're giving up, right? What is it? Your life force. Mm -hmm. What makes you a man? Your ability to conserve those things. And I know that sound, that's like, whoa, what does that have to do with reprogramming your mind? Because what you're doing is you're allowing somebody else to program your mind before you, before you go to sleep, before you go to rest. So be right. in, and it's not just that situation. People watch horror movies before they go to sleep. Like shit like that just fucks you Dude, up. Call of Duty. Call, call of Duty. Duty. Anything just, just, you want. You're out here shooting. Bro, the, I... It, have you do you remember when we used to binge Call of Duty yeah, yeah, at yeah. nighttime? You're literally dreaming that you're in in third person shooter, first person shooter, right? Right, and you, like you're yeah. they're playing the game in your fucking dreams. But motherfuckers, <laughs> I'm an honest dude, and I say it how it is. Yeah, right. I say it mm -hmm. how it is. So the objective here is for us to all level up, and we can do it together. But we have to be honest. We have to have the conversation, not being derogatory to each other, not not insulting each other, but being able to dialogue and converse and have the open mind to be wrong and then to accept that. And through being wrong, you can be correct, right? So reprogram your subconscious mind, the things that you you know you need to do, the music that you consume before you go to bed. Like you motherfuckers are going out clubbing every single night, getting wasted, getting trashed, mm -hmm. thinking that you're the hottest shit, listening to all this garbage music, these frequencies yeah. that are fucking up your DNA. And then you think that you wake up in the next morning and that you're going to be productive and elevating. Yeah. Quit kidding yourself, motherfucker. Like that's not how the that's not how the world works. If you compromise yourself in one area, it's going to affect and then spill over in all the areas in, of your life. So understand that you need to be a person of diligence, a stoic, a person that's responsible to whom much is given, much is required. If you want much from the universe, if you want much uh, from God, if you want to elevate yourself, much is required, and that means you need to reprogram your mind. There's a verse in the Bible that says, do not conform to this world, right? But be transformed by what? The renewal of your mind. Not mm -hmm. by believing, not by dreaming. No, by what? The renewal of your mind. Literally, mm -hmm. one of the most precious texts in the world is telling you, do not conform to this world, aka don't do the stuff the bots are doing. Get them. <laughs> but be transformed, aka become a new man or a new woman by what? The renewal of your mind. So you renew mm -hmm. your mind and then what? You become a new person. People want to become a new person without renewing their mind, without new information. So brother, mm -hmm. reprogram the subconscious mind and uh, start by the small habits, making sure that you're intentional when you go to bed, how you move. And uh, during the daytime, what I would say is very uh, important to figure out who you spend your time with. Mm -hmm. uh, that's yeah. really a big contributor to how you're going to operate. What's the type of frequency that these people are keeping you on what is the type of um spirit that these people give when they're around you it's extremely important because those people mm -hmm. are programming you so if somebody's always shitting on you right that 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 all day long all day long all day long that all seeps into your mind it affects you don't watch the news don't spend as much time on social media create the fuck out of it i'm going to open up a telegram for us motherfuckers soon so we can just chop it up mm -hmm. there without all the social media bullshit I might get, I might slap a discord together. I'll figure it out. I'm, I'm doing my own thing guys. So I'm kind of traveling and enjoying life. So, but I'm here always vibing with y'all. So, uh, I'll start moving in a different way as well, where we can, I don't know, not be as distracted, but I hope that answers your question, brother.
Yeah, definitely, definitely. I have a follow-up question, if you don't mind. Go for on it. That topic. So I was introduced to this whole kind of subject through NLP. I'm sure you've heard of it, Neural sure. Programming. And the main coach, I was speaking with him about the effect of the subconscious mind on your body's health, right? And he introduced the idea that your beliefs can influence just your beliefs about seeing everyone else and how old you think you're supposed to die can influence how you age. Does that make sense? Like, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. What? I can't hear it. Yeah. 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 No. So what I, yeah. So basically what you're trying to convey is do your thoughts have power, right? Do your thoughts have power to impact reality? And the answer is yes. Right. Because once you understand what that thought actually is, and that thought manifests through energy, right? Energy has the ability to what? Positively or negatively impact other uh, frequencies. So you get to di dictate the frequency of the thought. And if your frequency and your thought is always shit, then that's how you're going to operate. So you need to elevate your consciousness by elevating and renewing your mind. It goes back to your original question. And it needs to be something that comes from your subconscious and from your natural state. You can't force it. You know, and that's what I always teach. I always tell people, it's like, you can't force becoming the desire to become better. You either have the desire or you don't. Like you either want it or you don't want it. It's not this, oh, I'm going to force this lifestyle. Why? I don't force anything. I just really enjoy it, you know, and find, you need to be able to put yourself in that situation to renew your mind. Power versus force. Yeah, thank you, bro. There you go. You see it. power versus force, bro. Power versus force. There you go. Spire. Thank you, Luke. Appreciate you, G. Appreciate you. All right. Let me connect this double mic thing. Yeah, do it. I don't know if it'll work, though. Can we do it without the mics or no? No. No, because we can't hear the questions. What if we do 30 push-ups and continue this live? I'm going to do 30 push-ups. Go for it, bro. Hit up 30 push-ups. Let me see if this works. I'm trying to see if this works, guys. Uh, check, check, check. One, two, one, two. Dang, you know what? I had the double-sided. I think they packed it already. I'm moving to a new crib, guys. As you know, we're moving to fucking Bali. All right, we're out of here. We're out of this bitch. And we'll be back potentially later. But anyways, uh, all right, let's get the next person up in here. Zaid, phenomenal questions, brother. Appreciate you very much. All right, let's get another person. Do we have Austin in here? All right, Austin, Austin, Austin's in here. I'm going to add you to stream. How are you doing, brother? Good. How about yourself? Doing well. How's, how's your day? Uh, pretty good so far. Where are you from? Uh, Chicago. Nice. Probably mad yeah. cold out there, huh? Yeah, it's pretty cold, but, you know, it's still nice to, to go for a walk. Didn't the, didn't the mayor of Chicago just lose? That, that lady that kind of looked like Gollum, didn't she lose? <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not too sure on that. Not I too try sure. not to follow politics. Good, smart man. <laughs> Somebody yeah. said Ed Sheeran. That's funny. You probably get that all the time. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I that's funny. Do. Uh, all right, Austin, talk to me, brother. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So my question is, uh, yeah, previously you've mentioned about uh, being a digital stoic. So uh, what are some examples of how you practice stoicism in your life? Or put another way, what are uh, some principles from that that have served you well? Hmm. You know, so this idea of, of being a stoic and neglecting, you know, certain pleasures of the world for the mastery of self and the development of a of a temperament of what you would call a superior man and and focusing on the development of self of the mind, the spirit, the body as the main objective of life. I think, I think it's a great and honorable um, way of existing in, in train of thought. I, uh, I align a lot with this idea of, of being a digital stoic and it is a new era, right? You, we are digital stoics. We are individuals that transcend even in the digital space that is so toxic and so disgusting at times you can transcend, you can create content that impacts people and that elevates the consciousness of everybody that's around you. So let me, let me share something with you. Do you guys want me to share something with you? Something that's really interesting. 
I'm going to share a thought with you, a stoic principle. I don't even know if it's a stoic principle, but I'm going to share with you a principle that I believe many stoics um, probably believe in. And I think that once you guys understand this thought, you guys will understand kind of what we're doing here. So this is this this is this is the thought. OK, so you know why the Internet is, is extremely cool, because back in the day. Uh, Austin, I, as I was walking in Athens, Greece, in Greece, through the Parthenon, and I sat there watching the sunset, I asked myself, what, what takes a man, what leads a man to climb up this mountain, build uh, these, these monuments, and, and philosophize on the future in the reality of, of existence? And that's basically what these guys did. And I sat there and I was like, dang, what these guys were able to experience, right? And sitting together and communing and, and dialoguing and arguing and disagreeing and fighting, but conversing and elevating each other in spirit is something that you people would have to travel miles and, and go through a pilgrimage in order to experience, right? Nowadays with the internet, what we've done is we've digitalized what? The transfer of energy, right? So I can put you guys on the same vibrational frequency as me just by sharing my thoughts with you guys in a way in which you guys can receive them, therefore transmitting them in a way as if I was with you in person. That's the beauty of being a digital stoic. So the impact, the privilege is a lot bigger, but it also is a bigger responsibility. So let me give you a thought, right? So let's say your, your brain operates as a, as an antenna, as a receiver of information. That's, that's how it operates, right? It's receiving information, picking up information, and dissecting that information and you understand it in some way, shape or form. What's interesting is that people only perceive things in the conscious realm, right? But they don't perceive things in the unconscious realm. So when an idea comes to them, we know remember people are like, oh, I had an idea, right? But how do you know that you had that idea? How do you know that you didn't catch that thought, right? Through being on that same vibrational frequency of somebody else. I know it sounds insane, but it's very real and it can be proven through science. You just have to study the basics of quantum mechanics. So imagine I capture a thought, right? Like this idea that I'm casting to you now and I'm transmitting through my head and through my words, transmitting the energy and you're receiving it on the other side of the screen. It's fucking nuts, right? So that's the beauty of being a digital stoic is the ability to commune together and to be uh, elevating each other in spirit through the distance. So that would be my biggest kind of like feeling through all of it is kind of what it is to all be together in a space where you can literally be yourself and where people push you to be better. <laughs> That's the big part where, where people push you in an uncomfortable situation and put you in places that are uncomfortable and question your belief system and question your thought. Motherfucker, when was the last time somebody questioned everything about you? Looked at all the closets in your life and just absolutely ripped you apart. Some of you guys need that shit, but you're too soft, right? You perceive the world in a way that is not realistic. When the real world comes and it's going to come for a lot of you guys and it hasn't yet, it might come when the entire world resets, we'll see. You're going to be caught off guard because you don't have people around you. You don't have a network. You don't have digital stoics supporting you and elevating you, right? There's a lot of people that think the same way that you think that want to elevate, that want to continue building and that are in different fields. They're not all in e-commerce or in drop shipping or in crypto. There's people that hit me up from every area, every walk of life, and they do their own thing, right? But we commune together and we argue and we dialogue and I have disagreements and then we encourage each other and then we share things and then we uh, make money together and then we lose money together right so it's this idea of building capital club right that's what exactly what it is and that's kind of where where we're headed so to to tell you how it served me best these principles have served me best to teach me the value of of uh of what i what is the mastermind right it's when many minds come together and they form this giga chad brain right and that's what this is all about so that's to answer your question bro yeah that's super insightful thank you i think yeah the the power of platform and and just uh internet is is definitely a a big thing these days appreciate
Appreciate you, bro. Thanks for the question. Big one. Thank you. Thanks, Tommy. Bye. All right. Uh, it's, it's really good. Good session. Sorry that uh, you can't hear it. It's all good. Um, who had a biohacking question? I, I know somebody had a biohacking question. It's pretty I, good. No, I want to I wanna actually can I address a question. There's a pretty good question. Go for it. Uh, go, it's something about abdominals, about destroying your abs. Because I was just paying attention to the last few questions. Uh, if we can't. Oh, this one right here. All right. You want to get an account? Do I need the... No, not really. Oh, okay. Fire. Okay. So, so what's the question? The question is, I have just entered monk mode, which is a noob mode in my opinion. My goal is to have a six pack as soon as possible. What exercise that will destroy my abdomen the most? Okay. So abdominals, right? You want to get a six pack. Let's address that. First of all, it's all in not only what you eat, how you eat, the quantities and proportions, right? It's what do you do after you eat? Something I like to apply or I applied when I was like shredding heavily was creating a dynamic lifestyle. So after I ate my food, I would go for a 10 to 15 minute walk. All my walks vary depending on the objective, whether it was to get more flexible, develop more strength. And after that, a digestive tea. That alone helped me uh, stimulate uh, fat burning capabilities, just using that warm water in my system and just creating that movement to facilitate the digestion. So that is a, is a huge tip right there for you guys. Six pack is all about developing habits that go compounding over time. And that's the way you get the result. And then it's also understanding training because you've trained abs and you, you've had six pack for a long time and then you haven't had it and then you've had it again, but it's looked different based on what? I mean, a lot of factors. One is the type of abdominal training that you're doing, whether it's compound, whether it's lean, whether it's with uh, weights, whether it's none at all and you're just eating super clean. Yeah. I would say and the abs look completely different. Yeah, they all kind of they kind of all yeah. morph. Like you have your general yeah. shape, but all within that you can control your anatomy. And that, that's really interesting about the human body is how moldable it is to whatever you want it to be. Mm. But most people, once again, they 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 treat their body like an accident. They don't treat their body like a sculpture, right? They see all these sculptures of these superhumans. And they just admire the sculpture instead of being like, oh, shit, maybe that was actually a sculpture of a dude that yeah. somebody sculpted and that motherfucker looked like that. Yeah. Right. And Facts. it can be real. Why can't you look like that? Facts. So it's just one of these situations that once you understand how the game is played, you understand that perception is extremely important. How people perceive you is, is extremely important. So mm. when there's more millionaires than people with uh, a healthy body, you begin to understand what actually matters and what people want. You want to get into the room with extremely successful, wealthy people, tell them that you can increase their lifespan longevity by five years. They'll sit down and have a dinner with you. Why? Because they want to live longer. What? But you're going to them and talking to them about money, something that they don't need anymore. Of. They're trying to get rid of their shit. They have too much of it, right? It's too much, too much problems. You're trying to give them more problems. You don't understand how the game is played. You motherfuckers hit me up when the DMs and you're like, I'll work for you for free. Dude, I'm rich. I'm going to pay the best people. I don't need anybody to work for me for free. I'm yeah, past the work. You know what I mean? Like, don't hit me up for that. You need to be playing at a different level. So once you understand that you exercising equates to you making money, you tanning equates to you making money. How? How, Luke? T tell me, please, Luke. You're so delusional and so positive. My negative brain can't comprehend it. How is it that you can tan and, and get richer? Well, you get your vitamin C. So now you're in a situation, right, where not only are you getting your vitamin and you're increasing the melatonin levels in your skin and allowing your skin to absolutely be blessed by the sun, but you're allowing the uh, sleep cycles, right, to be balanced out. If you get 10, 12, 15 minutes of sun every single day, you're going to sleep better. You get tan, you're going to look better. You're going to feel healthier. Your skin's going to look better. Now, of course, it's not for everybody, but you're going to stand out. What? That's not going to make you more money, feeling more rested, looking better and feeling better. It's not well, going to make you, you more money. More rejuvenized. You feel re you rejuvenated. You feel young. You feel good. 
Okay. So, okay. So what I was going to, and, and, and the thing is, there's a reason why people in the, and this is proven, dude, there's a reason yeah. why people in the UK have seasonal depression. Well, and there's such, there's a, like, dude, these motherfuckers are under clouds 24 seven eating meat pies. Like no wonder, dude, you're in the subway. You like a fucking rat. Literally. You're like a rat, dude. You're like a rat. You're in the subway motherfucker. Like you, you don't see that. Like, do I have to show it to you again? It felt, it did you go like, for it. The, when we you, were in the UK. Have you then. seen the houses in the UK? They're shitholes. Honestly, this is depressing. These motherfuckers are getting scammed. Got them. Scammed. Yo, but so, but, so you, what? So what? You're going to compete with somebody at a professional level that has a better environment, has a better diet, looks better, feels better. Yeah. Motherfucker, wake up, dude. Wake up. What? You can't make a couple thousand dollars and move your ass to Bali? The fuck you doing in a shithole? You're a digital stoic. You're a digital entrepreneur. Make some money online, dude. If you don't, if for all those motherfuckers that say it's hard, shut the fuck up, dude. It's not hard to make a couple racks online. You can't tell me you can't pull $200 from the system every single day. That's six grand a month. You live like a king in Southeast Asia for six racks a month. You do. You, do. you have a maid, you have a chef, and you have a nice spot. Yeah. Like, dude, wake the fuck up. The life that you have is the life that you chose. If you're gross looking... If you feel nasty, if you wake up and you're tired, if you're poor, that's on you, motherfucker. Don't blame anybody. Facts. People want fast abs. Fuck the fast abs. Live a good life, dude. You can get them, though. It's true. So, yo, going back to the question, though, how do you destroy the abs? What I would do, guys, is, first of all, don't hit abs multiple times in a week, like in a row. It's like any muscle. If you want a massive chest, you have to have hypertrophy training, right? If you want a chest that perhaps is a little bit more flexible. You have to incorporate dynamic stretching and actual static stretching that will compromise the hypertrophy. Your muscle will look longer, but it's a give and take. Same thing with the abs, right? If you hit the abs really quick and you don't have proper form in your breathing, oxygenation, it's not proper, right? It's better for you to do 10 abs that are slow contracted with the right breathing and the right oxygenation than you doing 100 looking like you're literally demon possessed, right? So yeah, it's how you do it. And then it's combining that with uh, progressive overload. So you go from a harder variation, you drop set it 50% and you crank out as many as you can. And then you increase it the next set and let it rest at least one or two days for the dominoes. All right, let's get Dean in here. Oof. Yo, yo, Dean, how's it going, G? Oof. Going good, G. How are you guys doing? Doing well. How's your day? Going good. Um, I'm based in New Zealand. We're about to see you guys right now. Right now we're in Puerto Rico, brother. We're actually talking about going to uh, going to your part of the world, doing a little New Zealand and Australia trip. It's part of my, maybe maybe oh, next on. year. Yeah, it's in the bucket list. Nice. Go hang awesome. out with the Hobbit. And shit. Yeah, so, yeah, that's it. Like, I got a real simple here. question for you guys. Um, so, like, yeah, obviously right. you guys are you know, you guys are e-com job shippers. You've made a lot of money. So like, obviously you want your money to work for you. Um, so I guess the question around private equity, are you guys actively investing in startups or do you guys participate in any angel investing syndicates? That's a great question. So yeah, I operate in two ways. What's One, the question? So yeah, it's, it's okay. irrelevant. Okay. Uh, I'll answer it. Yeah. So yeah, I run the finances here. We're good. We're chilling. Um, so it's very simple. We, we operate the, the private equity in two, in two branches. One is personal money. And then uh, we have Capital Club. And inside Capital Club, we bring deal flows to members and we give them access to uh, different projects and different valuable opportunities because they're members. So like we'll give allocations and things out like that. Uh, but yeah, we're always looking for startups. We're always looking for companies to invest in. I think the last company I invested in uh, has already had, I think it was a 20X in the last 12 months. So that was a nice. pretty decent one that, that just uh, wrapped up and a couple other ones. So yeah, if you're in the direct-to-consumer e-commerce space, you have a product and not some white label shit and you want some mm. uh, good motherfuckers to come in and uh, advise, we're always uh, open for that. So yeah, always on the cool. table. That's sweet. Um, yeah, because I was just real interested in like um, how you guys scale. Obviously, like 
play a platform online, you know, you build a brand online, it's really powerful. Um, but nowadays, I think where the real value is, is long term, if you're building companies, I think if you look at the big four right now, the big social media companies, look how easily they've manipulated society and they can get into, you know, all these crevices in government. So I think like the next frontier is like, how, how do we as individuals, you know, build the next phase of that? Because I'm a self-taught programmer, so I can code. Um, and this is part of like my sort of mission is what can I build that will sort of put the world in, in a better direction. Mm. I mean, yeah, I think that's great. I think it would be figuring out what's going to be trending next and building within that realm. I think carving your own niche is extremely important. And I think if you can master AI, understanding kind of like you live in the tech world and if you can master that niche, I think you could you could form a little super a little super weapon of 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 robots that run around and do your bidding. Uh, you know, that's how people are moving nowadays. I think teams are going to get leaner and I think people are going to be relying a lot more on technology. So any open source product that includes privacy, that has privacy features, those mm -hmm. are always welcome and people fuck with a lot. Uh, privacy browsers are fucking amazing. Privacy email servers, things of this nature are all fucking amazing. Uh, so products in that nature, we always looking to invest in and to, uh, you know, give our advice and things of this nature. And yeah, if you have anything sick, we're always about it. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. And do you guys, do you guys also deal with any LPs? Like, have you guys got any sort of investment fund set up where you like sort of deal with big money? Like people with like we just work plus. I mean, well, that's, I wouldn't say that that's like an insane amount of money depending on the fund that you'd be investing in. But no, everything mm -hmm. that we do is private equity, home office, or through our, our right. member club. Yeah. We don't we don't participate nope. with anything outside. Yeah. Everything is 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 indoors. I do not like taking other people's money. I don't like getting phone calls. I don't need it. I just uh, choose right. to make my money in a different way. <laughs> right. So so the capital club, this is like a group of what? Is it very similar to Tate's War Room? Or like how does that how have you structured that? Well I don't I've never been in Tate's War Room, so I can't really tell you what's in, inside right. there besides what I've heard. But what I can mm -hmm. tell you is what Capital Club is. And Capital Club is exactly what it is right now, right? We're building the largest decentralized entrepreneurial network in the world for entrepreneurs to create, yep. multiply, and preserve wealth and opportunity, right? So it goes back to being in a, being in a circle and, and around people that are going to elevate you, but it can't be uh super closed and what do i mean by super closed it needs to be around people that agree on the same objective of life which is what the pursuit of your fullest potential and elevating and becoming absolute g and the best at what you do right that's it mm -hmm. it's very straightforward very simple and inside of that we have a lot of successful people because that's kind of what you attract when you become successful and you start mingling with people that elevate at the same level that you elevate and you start sharing deals, you start moving together, you start uh, doing coin listings and offerings all together, and you start doing things like that, or you get involved in, in IPOs, you get involved in ICOs, things of this nature, and shit gets fun. So uh, well, I thought, um, yeah, it's definitely, I it's definitely important to, in, in my opinion, I don't like taking money from other people. I don't like getting yeah. phone calls. So it's a For peace sure. of mind. Cool. Um, is there like a channel where we could potentially reach out to you privately? Um, or how does that work? I mean, no, not really. Just uh, DM me on Twitter. Uh, that's probably the right. best way. And then, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to be opening up a channel of communication soon. I'll be traveling, awesome. guys. I got a big kind of a plan for the, the rest of the year, traveling and doing content and shit like that. Uh, so we'll figure out how we can get the community kind of meshed in and involved. It's a lot of work. So uh bear with me awesome all right well appreciate, appreciate you, it thanks dean cheers mate all right shout out dean that was a good one Oof. let's get let's get a couple more people in here let's get daniel 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 how's it going g yes are you guys hearing me i can hear you loud and clear brother all right that's great that's great uh my first question was um yeah, like, what are some not so obvious distractions uh, that you encounter on a daily life? 
Yeah, I mean, what I would say are certain non, not so obvious dis distractions. It depends on the area of life. So, you know, you'll have distractions in the physical, you'll have distractions in the spiritual and the in the mental. What you need to figure out in is where are you weak, right? Like wh what areas do you have temptation in? Where do you where are you in a situation whereby you, you're compromised, right? Or where you don't have the power to fight through a situation. You need to identify these things and weed them out of your life. So I'll give you an example. It was about four years ago before I got uh, extremely uh, uh, involved with health, nutrition, the development of, of self and, the, and stopping the self-sabotage of your body. I used to eat a lot of candy, right? A lot of it, a lot of processed sugars. And I remember, right, even though I knew it was bad, I would have my pantry full of candy. And I was like, this thing that I'm trying to not do, I'm, I have, I've set up everything in a way for me to do it, All right? So I'm setting myself up for failure. So before being like, oh, what are the not so subtle things that are distractions? Look at the things that are obvious distractions. Get rid of those first, bro. Like get rid of the, right. get rid of the obvious shit. Get rid of the Pringles in the bedroom, right? If you want to eat mm -hmm. some snacks, at least walk down to the pantry. Don't have shit in your fucking room. Like some of you guys are fucking pigs, dude. Yeah, I mean, I mean, pigs. it's not necessarily like eating stuff, but it's more like it can be anything, brother. It can be I mean, anything. I, I, I for it can example, be the time like, you spend like on to, your phone. Exactly, because I like to play chess a lot or learn uh, German, for example, and then I notice that. Whilst I'm playing chess, I feel like I'm doing something productive. But sometimes it's just sort of a distraction from something else that I know that I need to do. But instead, I'm doing different stuff to sort of make up for it. Do I understand. You, do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're you're you go back to the, a situation of least resistance, right? So as soon as you face any resistance, you go back to the the norm, right? What you're used to, where you're comfortable. This is bot-like behavior. I'm just going to be honest with you, right? And the reason it's bot-like behavior is because what you're doing is you're going back to the default of what you were pro what you're programmed to do. You've programmed yourself to enjoy chess. You've programmed yourself to be in a situation that that's your coping mechanism, right? But that's bot behavior. Instead, you should be like, today I like chess. I'm going to play chess for 45 minutes, right? Mm. And I'm going to and, and let's say it's 44 minutes or 45 minutes, and you lose the match. Then you look at yourself and you're like. Okay, well, I'm going to play till I win. And then you play till you win and you leave with a fucking W, right? And you right. leave with a, a dub. But then you stop chess and you get back to fucking work, cool. right? So if chess is your coping mechanism, understand that it doesn't matter what the thing is. The principle is a good thing at the wrong time can become a bad thing. A good thing at the wrong time can be a bad thing. It's not that the thing is wrong. It's that you're misusing it. Mm. right chess is great enjoy all the chess that you want but how much be better would chess be if everything that you said you were going to do was done and now you have the peace of mind and the tranquility and you can actually enjoy the game and you actually enjoy it enjoy it here's the thing sometimes you hate yourself after playing chess because you're like <laughs> crap i shouldn't have been playing I agreed what really helps me bro is looking at the final outcome of the event i'm procrastinating with so if i'm procrastinating and i'm not wanting to do something first thing mm. i do is like what's the final outcome in the final outcome when it's finished and it's positive, that gives me the energy momentum to go through. And, and, and it also has to do with the ROI of, of what you want in life, right? So for example, what is your goal? I'll ask you, right? What is your goal? My goal is to go to become financially independent before I'm 30. Okay. What does that mean? What is financially independent? Financially independent for me means that I can maintain and enjoy my life and live my lifestyle without having to worry about not having enough money. How much money would that be? Well, I said I was going to be a millionaire before 30. So for now, it's about a million, I guess. OK, OK, so you're starting from scratch. Yes. OK, so you shouldn't be playing chess. You see, it's like it's that it's it's that right. It's not that chess isn't important. It's that you don't have money, G. And money is important so that you can play chess in the fucking Maldives with a sexy girl and eating organic food in tan, motherfucker. But instead, you're playing chess like an absolute bot, like a drone. Don't do that. Like, you know better. 
So get your shit together, bro. Next three years, go make a quarter million dollars. every. What? You can't? You can't? You can't? Who's going to tell what? Somebody's going to tell you you can't do it? Go make $100,000 in the next year. Go make $100,000 right. the next year. What? You can't do it? Fuck off. No, def- yeah, man. That's yes. True. That's and true, then you bro. play chess in fucking Dubai with your boys, right, motherfucker. Bro. You know Come on! You know what, why are you yeah. settling for a shittier life? Yeah, Go play with the fucking marble chess pieces, dude. Not this plastic ass cheap shit. Go play with go go play with the best in the world, dude. Go play with the best in the world. Don't settle for shit. Elevate your consciousness. Elevate your mind, ladies and gentlemen. This is a, this is a new way of thinking. New standards for all your dreams and your goals. You will accomplish. You're gonna get to enjoy the shit in your life. You're going to enjoy it, Daniel, but you have to delay it. You have to yeah. delay the gratification, brother. And you're mm-hmm. going to enjoy it, dude. You're, I promise, bro. Every time you want to play chess, dude, fucking play a match of chess and get back to work. Hey. Dude, I get back to man. work, dude. You feel me? I appreciate it, man. Seriously. Appreciate you, Daniel. Appreciate you, brother. Thanks. Better chess than Call of Duty. What a G. Daniel's a G, bro. And better chess than Call of Duty. That's facts, bro. Better chess than Call of Duty. Well done, Daniel. Perfect. Hope you guys are uh, having fun. I'm having a good time. I love you guys. That's why I'm talking to you guys with passion so that you guys understand um, me. All right. Sounds good. We have... Who do we have here? We have... Drew, I can't seem to find your question though. Not on Discord. It's not showing up. What's your uh? What's your what's your username? Yeah, oh, it says his mic is disconnected. All right, his mic's disconnected. Let's get Joe up in here. Joe, what's your username, bro? Oh, I'm Bagel. Bagel. Oh, there we go. Right. I was supposed to be like the first one, but I'm a dumbass. I didn't send you the question. Bro, so my but bad. don't. But but don't say that, brother. Yeah, it's. Don't talk to yourself that way. Spellcast. Thank you. If, if you call yourself a dumbass, what is everybody else going to call you, my friend? A dumbass. But you're not that. You're a exactly. smart man. That's why you're here today, brother. Yeah. Facts. All right. So let's start on the good note, Joe. What can you do? Talk to hey, me, bro. Man. Yo, thank you for honestly doing this tonight. I just wanted to put that out there. You're both fucking beasts, and I follow you so heavily, and you're legends, honestly, in the cool. space. Um, thank you, brother. Yeah, no problem. I just wanted to say, like, I have fucking endless questions for you, but I've been bulking about like the past two years lifting and shit like that um, mm. pretty heavily. And I've just started to do my cut and I've done intermediate fasting and stuff along those lines. So I was looking mm. for both of your point of views. Like what's your typical diet on a daily basis and what are some different potions or recipes that you would recommend? Um, tell me hit my goals. So what I would recommend first off is how do you feel when you go on a fast so when you're doing the intermittent fasting, how are you feeling? Are you feeling good or are you getting hangry? Are you getting tired? Do you feel like you're getting insulin swings? Because that's going to tell you where you're genetically programmed, whether you're fat adapted or whether you're not fat adapted. And you're basically a sugar burner. So that is going to give you a sign. So do you know or no? Uh, I'm on it. So what I do is I don't eat until about 12 o'clock, but I'll have a coffee in the morning just because the caffeine helps me stimulate myself until then. And then I'll probably Correct. eat like a light lunch around 1231 ish. It's usually like straight protein, like grilled mm. chicken and like a little bit of cauliflower rice just to keep the calories low and try to incorporate a carb in like every meal. And so, but I don't, I feel like mad clear minded throughout the day. You know what I mean? Like I don't get very groggy or hangry anymore. I'm kind of used to that. Like it's not a big deal, you know? And before, when you started, you did feel that way, though. Oh, a little bit because I was bulking, you know. So I was eating like a oh, fuck. Correct. So, like first Correct. thing in the morning, Correct. I'm eating. Next thing, I'm eating. Like you know how it is. And so now I'm like, yeah, you basically program your body with uh, insulin, 100. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, exactly. It's that glucose intake. So what I would suggest is first off, switch it up. Start incorporating fractal eating. So I wouldn't be eating at 12 o'clock all the time, right? I'd be mm-hmm. switching it up. I'd be eating at two o'clock or three o'clock, and then go back to 11:30 or 1230, switch it up on the body and then see how the body feels. So push yourself to two, three o'clock. And if you start in getting hangry or try to do a workout, right? Mild pace workout and then see how your body feels. If you feel fine, if you feel like you're chilling, then that's your body indicating that you're fat adapted and that you're tapping mm-hmm. into fat for that storage of energy. 
Now, if you start getting hangry and you're like, you're feeling the insulin swings, that's your body, right? Telling you that you're not fat adapted. Mm -hmm. What is it looking for? It's looking for that glucose. That's yeah. why it's secreting the adrenals, which takes all the muscle, right? That you've been storing with the glycogen, depletes it to mm -hmm. what? To use the amino acids so the brain can run. Yeah. That's why the brain's going haywire. So what you should do is you should experiment, right? Go to 3 p.m. and see how your body feels. Mm -hmm. And if your body feels good, then dude, that's your body telling you that you're fat adapted. Bingo. Perfect. So you do fractal eating and then you switch up your protein. I've personally switched up from chicken. I used to go heavy on chicken, mm -hmm. but I realized that it's a bitch meat in my opinion, especially in comparison yeah. to red meat with, mm -hmm. yeah. So I would highly suggest start incorporating some red meat, like grass fed mm -hmm. red meat. Okay. And when you do fractal eating also change the protein intake right so you can do eggs right you can do an mm -hmm. egg wrap you can do uh bone broth with eggs which i love to do as well and it's okay. also warm so if you are in a cool environment it can warm you up heat you up and if you train when your organs are warm it's a complete different experience than when you have your organs feeling cool mm -hmm. and how do you do that by incorporating like frozen fruit that's why i'll do my vitality bowls and i'll add the frozen fruit and I'll go do my sun cycle outside, but deep, but inside I'm cool mm -hmm. and I'm freshed up and I'm feeling fantastic. Therefore the heat doesn't affect me as much. So it's understanding that if you're trying to lose weight, I would tap more into like hotter, warm food. I'd be avoiding cold water. I'd be doing room temperature water or hot water with shredder cord. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it's also applying, um, when you eat right after you eat, go for a walk. Trust me, dude. One of the biggest hacks is three walks every day. First thing I do in the morning, wake up, do a, a potion. This is one of my favorite potions for cleansing the body. It's warm water with a shot of mother, mother what? It's the orange. You, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, um, when they call like mother up. ginger shots or something like that? No. No? I don't no. even know them. It's the important mother, bro. Um... I don't know. I'm apple not. cider vinegar. Apple cider apple vinegar. Apple cider vinegar. Mm -hmm. Yes. And here, here's the perks and the beauty of apple cider vinegar. You can almost use it as a tincture, right? Because it contains alcohol. What you do is I'll put herbs in it and I'll let it sit for months. I'll put rosemary. I'll put hawthorn berries. I'll put uh, red cloves. And whatever you put inside cinnamon sticks will change the flavor of the actual apple cider vinegar, mm -hmm. which also putting it into your system helps with digestion, right? You do want to kind of blend it with water and other substances. So it's not as harsh on the stomach. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the, the potion is the following. It's warm water, apple cider vinegar, chlorophyll, lemon, and three drops of wild press oregano. Okay. Wild press oregano oil. Wild press oregano oil, the amount of antioxidants and antiseptics it has, dude, it cleans you from, from the inside out. Awesome. It's it's back in the day, the grave robbers would actually, before going into a grave and dealing with the bodies, they would literally put it all over their skin because it would prevent if they had some sort of cut or leisure to get infected because oh, wow. of the antiseptics of the wild press oregano. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's pretty fire. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so I would suggest I, I, well, that. Yeah, tell me, tell me, tell me. I got one more actually for Luke because, you know, he's a big okay. uh, finance guy. Um, I'm not surprised why no one's really asked you about crypto yet. So surprising because you're such a fucking wizard. Um, I was just wondering, like, what are the main projects you're looking at to um, as the year progresses? Obviously, like AI tickers and stuff like that. But what are other things that you think are like sneaking under the radar? So what I always say when it comes to investing is you need to bet on, on winning people. Mm -hmm. Projects are people, guys. Projects are founders. Projects are an accumulation of experience and vision, right? So I look at I look at the track record of individuals. I look at how people are uh, interacting as a team, what their ability to uh, maintain happy customers is, their ability to maintain happy employees, what's the short-term vision for the company, what are the daily habits of the founder. <laughs> before I even look at anything outside of it, I look at the company, right? So for example, when I invested in PancakeSwap and I invested in Binance, I started buying Binance in 2017 at $2, right? And it peaked over 600, it was a 300X return investment. Unicorn status, guys, like for every $1,000, there was a quarter million pulled. 
That's the number that you need to have in your mind because it's real. And if you don't think it's real, you haven't been in crypto long enough. Correct. And anybody in the comment section that has been in crypto will tell you that a 100x, a 50x, a 30x is very well possible if you understand and you get in at the right time. And that's what I did. So I didn't look at anything except initially for the, 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 the low caps or the mid caps or projects under, I don't know, a <coughs> billion dollars. Mm -hmm. I look at the teams. That's the first thing I look at is how are these guys moving? And I operate based off of that. Well, that and you also is the predictions based on we know predictions based off of trends. Correct. So we, for example, in 2017, we called Decentraland Mana because Nate was talking about the metaverse coming. I called uh, Cardano at half a penny. I wouldn't invest in any of these right now. These were kind of like the hype wave. So mm -hmm. as crypto emerges in the next round, you're going to start seeing a lot, a lot of dot AI domains popping up with ICOs and cryptos and, and all this garbage. So whenever the next bull run shows up, have your eyes peeled because there will be one or two super unicorns that emerge from that. They're actually legit companies. And then the other 200 aren't, but it doesn't mean that they're not potentially money vehicles. So with that being said, that's kind of the, the, the mindset behind that one, G. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. That, that was awesome. You guys are the best. Joe, appreciate you, brother. Have a See wonderful you. day. Appreciate you. Have a good one. Yeah, red meat, brother. <laughs> All right, perfect. We got Hams up in here. Let me see. Where is? I'm not sure what is uh, his username. Hamza, what's your username? I got you. Oh hi. Oh hey, Hamza, how you doing, G? Uh, good and you. I'm. Good. Uh, yes, Where are you from? Uh, I I live in Canada, but. Uh, I'm from Morocco and I'm an immigrant, so I'm, I just want to thank uh, you uh, to invite me on this call and I'm very grateful to, to be with two very knowledgeable and sympathetic people like you. So, yeah. Thank you, sir. So uh, my question is how to get into biohacking because uh, I want to get into it, but uh, I have not found uh, enough re resources. So uh, I have two, uh, three questions. Uh, for the diet, uh, give me three sources of uh, carbs, protein and, fa uh, and fat, give me uh, some exercises to do and what exerci exercises to do and uh, how to optimize your, your sleep and do you use a sauna or, or cold lunges? This kid's a monster. Bro, I'm going to have to tackle so, each one so at this a time. Is, so, this is, a so this is what we're going to do, Hamza. It was a barrage. Like, so, so Hamza, Hamza this is what we're going to do, brother. This is going to be very simple because it's a very long one. So as you know, Mr. Belmar has uh, the 300 right? This is a, an elite program to take people from zero to hero hero. What I want to do is I'm going to gift you the scholarship. I'm going to pay for it for you to go through the biohacking. It's almost a thousand dollars. So I know you're 13, right? But what I'm going to do is I'll, I'm going to cover the scholarship and it's not just, Oh, whatever, this is his company. So I have to pay him. Right. And I'm going to get, make sure that you get three months of absolute biohacking with Nate to get all of your answers, question, uh, all your questions answered. Make sure that all the answers that you get make uh, are relevant to all the questions that you had. So with that being said, fire, I would give you all the, I would give you all the sauce now, but you'll just have to go through 300 yeah. with Nate. Uh, so make sure that uh, you get a DM from him. Yeah. Send me a DM and make sure you take photos right now. Cause if you apply all the protocols, my friend, you're going to be looking really good. So shredded, make sure bro. you take photos now. So, yep. Yeah. yeah. Make sure you get before and after photos. Make sure you're shredding before you're already, ready. We're, dude, already have four to five testimonials of guys that we've been working on for the last couple of weeks. So, uh, so, uh, so please, I also have a question for, for Luke. Uh, I'm looking to start a, a copywriting uh, ad agency, uh, precious, precious, like Facebook ads and Google ads, and uh, is it a too uh, saturated market? And uh, and uh, can you give me some tips? Hmm. What do you like to do? Uh, copywriting. But there's something called Chat GPT. Yes, do you yes, think I know. You, I know. You, are you going to use it? Yes, I I want to program a, a bot that is going to. Uh, generate me high ticket clients so yes but uh, it's very low quality copy so i'm going to do the, the, the copy myself or i'm going to program a bot i like that i like this kid a lot 
Uh, my suggestion for you would be get a website uh, yeah, we, with your contact and your information. Okay. I will send you a sample website from another kid that I met by the name of Eric Zhu. He's a 15 year old entrepreneur and he has a very clean, very nice website that a lot of you guys should have for contact information. Build your socials, make sure that your parents approve of these endeavors they, that they you're approve, taking on. Good, make sure. My... And remember to uh, understand to balance your life, right? You're still young, brother. Like you got a long fucking journey. If you're going to be biohacking, you got a, well, another hundred years, right? Like you haven't even you haven't even hit ten percent yet, right? So the fact that you're here, you're a G. So future multimillionaire in the making. As long as you don't get cocky. If you get cocky and you think you're hot shit, motherfucker, I don't care if you got three, four, five million dollars in the bank account, a hundred million. What matters is that you don't lose yourself in the process. All right. So good thing you have all these these G's up in here that are going to be making sure you're taken care of, brother. So uh those are my thoughts those are my suggestions to you copywriting bro uh sheesh start getting into some communities start practicing get that website up start getting your name out there and i'm i'm, I'm and i i think you'll get some gigs for sure and also hamza send luke on the discord your ig username that way i can yes don't okay. perfect all right Appreciate you, Hamza. Well done, brother. Thank you. Thank you. And I also love uh, uh, a lot of your content. Keep continuing. I'm very like fan of you. Yes. Thank, thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Crush it, G. Fucking G. Fucking G. I like that. All right. Shout out to Wamza with the W now. Wamza in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. Wamza in the chat. Young cat, absolutely killing it. That's what it's all about, right? Because we have people here that are worth tens of millions of dollars watching this. And they see somebody who's 13 and they get inspired, right? Because you can learn from everything. And because everyone. when you know the way broadly, you will see it in all things. Because you wish you were that entrepreneur that was 13 being in a room like this. Like there's 2,100 people, bro. That's a lot of motherfuckers, bro. It's a lot of people now looking out for Wamza. So shout out Wamza. Well done, brother. We got Drew up in here. Drew, how's it going, G? Nice, uh, nice jacket. You're on. I can't hear you. Maybe you're connected to the Bluetooth in the car. Not sure. Oh yeah. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. So sad. Going once, going twice. Sold. All right, you can retry it. All right, we got Drove up in here. Let's see. Hope you guys are having fun, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. W in the chat, if this has been a, a productive stream, a stream that has uh, elevated you. I'm gonna put that I think it's been a good one. Can you get some water? Yeah, I'll grab some waters. I have some here. So far. This is what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. We come together and we fucking have a good time elevating, becoming better, becoming more conscientious, making more money, getting connected, more relationships, more business, more opportunities. Like, why not, bro? Who's going to tell me otherwise? Who's going to tell me otherwise? Who's going to tell me that I can't do something, bro? That's the best video. They're going to see in the vlog tomorrow. Vlog tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, 6 p.m. Eastern. We are... Posting the East Palestine, Ohio vlog. Absolutely crazy. Make sure you tune in tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be crazy. All right, we got Drew up in here. How's it hey, going, brother? You guys, did you guys clearly pull me in? Shit. We That's can't hear you. Come true, man. Hey, can you hear me now? Oh, sorry. You didn't have the headphone on, bro. Yo, uh, the sky looks nice, bro. The sky looks nice out there. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, yeah. No, I can hear you. Put the headphones on. It's good. Oh, sorry. One second. Just give me. Please don't disconnect. Please. <laughs> no worries, brother. No worries. Yes, can you hear me now? Ladies and gentlemen, we need the likes up, by the way. Make sure you like the video. All right, Drew. How's it now? going, brother? Yes, can hear you loud and clear. Oh, really good, my man. Really good. Shit, dude, you guys just pulled me in. Fuck, I can't believe that. What's up, bro? My G's, my G's, my G's. Shit. 
So, so, so I had a couple of questions. Sorry, I'm, I'm ready for the shame that you guys make through. I'm just maybe ready for it. So, so I've tried dropshipping, all that stuff. I don't know. Something's not adding up, my friend. I'm not too sure. But I feel like I, I really, I am aware of all this matrix, like how people behave and everything. Like I can track them really, really good. I can know what they're feeling, even they're angry, all that bullshit. I have really good emotional control as well. Like I have, I have abs, like I'm working out since eight years now. And I've, I, I've mastered that trick of emotion control, my diet control, whatever I put in my body, everything. But when it comes to money, I'm not too sure. Maybe it's my, it's my subconscious, maybe, because my family is rich back in India, but now I'm in New Zealand. I, I left them because oh, yeah. they were trying to... They were trying you're, to cutting, you're, cutting, you're cutting up, bro. You're cutting up. Wherever it is that you were standing before was good. You were cutting up. Is it good now? Hey, is it good? No, I can't hear you very well. It's a little bit chopped up, brother. M might be us. You think can't so? be us? No, he's out in the middle of nowhere. All right, might be us. Yo, Drew, can you Yo, hear me? Yo, can we hear me? Hello? No. No. No, nothing again. Also glitchy. Also glitchy. Oh man, that's tough. <laughs> Maybe it's us though. <laughs> it might be us. Is it us? It might be us. Here, let me see. Oh, I got you now. I got you. I got you. I got you. Oh, go for working. it. You can hear me now? Yeah, yeah, bro. Go for it. Loud and clear, brother. Oh, what's up, y'all? How's it going? Yeah, so uh, my question was, how can you identify how to bring value to high status people or like high net worth individuals? So you need to study people the same way you study markets. Right. So the same the same way you study markets, you need to be able to study individuals. What does this mean? Is that people have tendencies, people have patterns, people have habits, people have things that they enjoy. Successful people don't just care about money. It's an it's an illusion, right? That successful people only care about money. The last thing we care about once you have money is money. Right. You care about all these other things that maybe you need money for. But your spectrum of what you need is very, very wide. You need people you can trust, right? You need people to take care of your businesses. You need people to take care of your stuff. You need real friends. You need people that aren't going to mooch off of you, right? You need business partners. You need new opportunities. You assistance need fitness. That you trust. You need it? assistance. Like all these things are necessary, right? Now, the question is, how do you spot that opportunity? Well, you can't be doing what everybody else does, right? So if everybody's out here being like, Yo, I'll work for you for free. Dude, I said it before, right? I don't need anybody to work for me for free. I'm rich. I want to pay for the best talent. You think Mark Zuckerberg's out here hiring people? Like, I'm going to come work for you for free. Maybe if he's a super G talented individual, sure, maybe in a blue moon, but the best talent you got to pay for. And that's the type of talent I want. So when people are like, hey, you know what? what value can I bring to you? The only value that you can bring is cheap labor. I, I don't need that. I don't need slaves, right? Like I don't need that. If I want slaves, I just have little robots on the internet as slaves working 24 seven. I don't need people, right? So now we're in a situation whereby if I don't need money and I don't need, let's say free work, what do I need? Well, if somebody came to me right now and they're like, I can sit you down and help you get passports in different countries. If I can help you down, sit you down and help you develop a life strategy to increase your net worth guaranteed by 8% a year, 12% a year. If I can connect you with this mine in Guatemala that mines silver and you can invest in the mining company, that, that's the type of shit I'm in, I care of. Not like, oh, can I, can I edit videos for you, Instagram reels? Like, Dude, you don't think I'll just, if I wanted to do reels or whatever it was, I would hire the best people, right? So people are in a situation whereby they only think business when they don't understand that people have other areas in their life. There was this person that I knew, right? And they were a chiropractor. And this chiropractor, right? She was a female. And what she would do is she would do at, like at home service, right? So she would go to people's houses and do chiropractic work. Well, when she would go, she would basically tell all these rich people where she was going and working about her husband, her husband's business or 
what her husband was doing. And then the next time she would figure out a way to get the husband in the room. And he was the business one. And she was the Trojan horse. But she came in with the chiropractic work and she provided value fixing the dude's back. And he got in the room. Yeah. But you can't think outside of the box because you live in the box. It's and, like I, and, it's, and it's and it's 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 an, it's understanding that you live in the in in the in the box because that's what you've been conditioned to do. You don't play as a team, right? Any time that you collaborate in school, what do they call it? Cheating. They call it cheating. They call it cheating. They're literally conning you in real time that you can't collaborate with other people to find answers quickly. It's called cheating. No, you got to figure it out by yourself. Memorize it through your head. Get it right. So if not your loser, F. value must be provided through your ability to perceive what the other individual needs, whether they know that they need it or not. I have sometimes the ability to perceive what people need without them needing it, bringing it to them, providing the value and executing. I'll give you another example. Another really good way of providing value is gifts. When you visit people, you should be bringing them gifts. So for example, I've done Capital Club around the world. Every time there's maybe two or three guys that bring me gifts. Not that you need to bring gifts or that bringing gifts is important. But if I was to go to meet with a minister of finance, somebody that's extremely important, I would study this person, figure out, hey, what does this guy like? Does he like cigars? Does he like whatever? I'll bring it. I'll have a good time. I'll bring it for him. It's, it's, it's a sign of respect. It's a sign that I know him, right? It's a sign that I've taken the time. It's a sign that you care about. Of respect. It's a sign that you care about the other person yeah. more than you care about yourself. And it's just a sign of how you operate. And if it comes from a place of kindness and a place of intention and not manipulation, right, where you're trying to get your way, now you don't have to sleep, right, thinking that you're a scam. Because in your nature, it's the nature of giving. And when you give, that's what business is all about. It's about serving people, right? So when you serve people, that's when people come. So you need to serve. You have to have a servant's heart. Like that's what it's all about. You need to be able to spot opportunity. And that's how you elevate, dude. You elevate by helping people. Like why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you ride the coattails of success to get to the top of the mountain, brother? People are out here being like, you got to work hard. You got to work hard. They said, they say I'm lucky. So I don't give a fuck if I was lucky. I do think I care whether you think I'm lucky or not, bro. The bank account doesn't matter if I work 30 years for it or not. It's fucking sitting there. So the whole point is provide value. And eventually it's going to be reciprocated unto you. People say I'm lucky, but I would say I'm just well positioned. And you can position yourself in the right way by serving people. It's the name of the game. It's the name of the game. Dope, bro. Yeah, that's good, man. That's good stuff. That's all I got, though. Appreciate, Appreciate you, it, Drew. Luke. Have a good one, G. All righty, ladies and gentlemen. Do you want to try Drub again or no? Let's try. He See looks you. a little glitchy right there. He does look glitchy. We'll try it one more time. Hey, hey. All right, stop moving. <laughs> Stop moving, stop okay. moving, stop moving. All right, go for it. So I'm in the middle of the road right now. Look at it. <laughs> yeah. Careful, man. So, so, be safe, uh, yeah. be safe. So, so like you just said, that there's a recipe, and I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, the, like, right now, you you have, like, proper ingredients pulled in at the right time. That's why your recipe is really different than mine, and everyone's recipe is different. So for me i'm just entering into market and i'm just now reading i'm halfway through the uh, the changing world order and i've started realizing shit that the insight is really really fucking messing my brain up i'm like realizing all the shit now so look, the question is for me like if i'm here right now and like i have full on fire right now i'm, I'm I, I can devote all my time and everything right now i'm just ready to learn everything so the recipe that you have right now in you all your all the data you have which you're operating on and look at me right now. I might be really, really far away. But since I'm reading this book, The Changing World Order, I'm pretty sure I can I can gather all those recipes and connect the dots and finally make my own way out of this shit. So I'm just asking you, like, what habits or what ingredients should I be pulling in? Do you have some, some tips for me, like some books that I should be reading? Because to understand, maybe, maybe it's just about the market, to understand the market well, just like you do. 
is it like some things that I really need to be learning on some books? Is it some books? Because I'm I'm pretty sure I have good habits because I'm really fit since since a long time now, and I'm I'm really resilient as well. I know how to bounce back on situations like you did that J.P. Morgan one on Spark. It was it just it just felt like shit. This this dude is real genius, killing. So I'm I'm just trying to pull all the things. I'm I'm not too sure like because there's too much information on the internet as well. So I just try to avoid most of it because most of it is just crap. They're just consuming all the average person. So to you personally, shit, I didn't even know if I could really even talk to you any any time in, in my life. Shit, I'm just talking to you. So I just want to know. Give me some recipes, some ingredients, where uh, some places where I can find these ingredients and make my own recipe and someday become like you, my man. Mm. Well, you don't want to become like me. You want to become like the best version of you. And that question is the question you have to answer. What is the best version of me? So what you have to figure out first is who do you want to be? Right now you're running around like a headless chicken. You think that you need money, but maybe money is not what you need. Maybe what you need is direction and then maybe the money will come. The thing is, as long as you have a roof over your head, food to eat, shelter, and internet and a computer, brother, let's get the fucking work, right? But you have to develop into the full version of yourself. What does that mean? Is that every action that you take, every movement is designed, right, to not sabotage yourself, but to focus on becoming the best version of yourself. So now the question is, is every action in your life aligned to bringing you to your fullest potential or are you sabotaging yourself? And if you are sabotaging yourself, you need to be able to identify where you're sabotaging yourself. What are the areas? Write them down. And then what you need to do is make a commitment with yourself, a contract, a written contract stating, I will do these things. I will not do these things. And be a man of your word. Be a man that trusts what he says. If you can't trust your ability to go to the gym, if you can't trust your ability to eat well, if you can't trust your ability to sit your ass down and read 100 pages of a fucking book in a day, <clears throat> what makes you think you deserve a fucking million dollars? What makes you think that you're cut out for the big leagues? Bro, do you, you, you don't seem to understand the levels of the game. The levels of the game are going to require you to become a different type of person. A different type of person. That's what it's going to require. So... What you need to do is identify the areas in your life right now, write them down that need change, that you're sabotaging yourself in, and then make an agreement with yourself, dude. And if you think I'm I'm like talking out of my ass, go watch the Kobe Bryant interview where he said, you know what? I wanted to accomplish my goal of winning X. Therefore, I did what? I said I needed to do a certain plan during the summer, my training camp. But then I realized I had to do more. So what did I do? I made a contract with myself and I said, I am going to do this. And he did it. The problem is you're saying you're going to do something and then you don't do it, brother. Now you can tell me, oh, no, I do it. But if you did, your life would reflect it. <laughs> I do it, bro. You know what I mean? I wake up every single fucking morning at 530 and I go for a walk every day, bro. And then I go for a sprint and then I wake up and then I do my push-ups, and then I read for two hours and then I stretch and then I eat my healthy food. And then I stay away from the bullshit music and the bullshit parties and the nonsense and drama of the internet and the garbage. And I focus on how can I provide value to the ecosystem? And then the eco, not how can I take? No, how can I be of value? Where do you provide value? And if you don't know where to provide value, sit down and think. Where does the market need value? Everywhere. Everything can be done better. Everything. What? We can't have a crypto exchange that actually holds people's money for once? You know what I mean? Like maybe somebody comes up with that idea someday. So there's always opportunities, my brother. But your inability to spot the opportunities is because it's your inability to see. And like I've said before, you need to be in a situation where you need to change your mindset. And the only way that you change your mindset is by the information that you consume. So changing world order, that's cool. But what you got to change before the world order changes is change yourself, brother. <laughs> like 
do you think it matters what currency, whether we're trading cows or whether we're trading Bitcoin in the future? The person that still provides value is going to make it. Right. It's going to make it like that's the name of the game. So people out here worried about currency resets and all this shit and oh, I'm stressing out, bro. You're so stressed. I see it in your face. There's nothing to stress about. You're fucking alive. Everything else is a bonus. Don't you fucking get it to your head? Everything else is a level of bonus. You're a video game character playing in this game. Play to win, dude. Like the fuck you walking around like a defeated individual. You know what I mean? Like why? 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 Who's holding you back? You, dude. You yourself. You have a nice dog there. You can go for fucking walks, make some money online. Dude, I made, I don't know, like $2 million selling dog products. Because I hung out with my dogs. And I was like, oh, shit, this would be something cool that my dogs want. And I tried it and it worked. But it could have not worked. But who cares? It worked. And it worked. I may not have been a genius, but I tried. Motherfucker, get to trying. Get to trying. Get your shit straight. You feel me? Yeah. 100%. No, thanks for that, my man. I appreciate you, G. Appreciate you, brother. Thanks a lot, man. Love, love, love. Fire, bro. I had to I had to go a little bit hard on, on Brother Drove, but it's the name of the game, bro. It's the name of the game because it's the truth. It's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth, Brother Drove. Ah, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's been a good stream. Hour and 20 minutes, 2,100 people. Uh, I'm out of here. It's been, it's been real. It's been a good one. Be blessed. Be well. All the love, all the power to you guys. And may you have a wonderful day. Focus on self-developing. Do some push-ups if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys on the next one.